Egzamin maturalny z języka angielskiego. Poziom rozszerzony. Usłyszysz dwukrotnie teksty do zadań od pierwszego do trzeciego. Przed wysłuchaniem każdego tekstu usłyszysz dźwięk. W nagraniu przewidziane są przerwy na zapoznanie się z poleceniami oraz treścią zadań sygnalizowane dźwiękiem. Rozwiązuj poszczególne zadania w trakcie słuchania nagrań oraz w czasie przerw po ich wysłuchaniu. Zadanie pierwsze. Przeczytaj polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania. One, the Huffington Post reports that United will be the first U.S. airline to limit basic economy flyers to a single free carry-on bag that can fit under a seat. In other words, those who purchase the cheapest tickets will only be allowed one personal item that fits under the seat in front of them. In addition, such passengers will be unable to claim airline miles and will be randomly assigned seating on the day of the flight. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. The Huffington Post reports that United will be the first US airline to limit basic economy flyers to a single free carry-on bag that can fit under a seat. In other words, those who purchase the cheapest tickets will only be allowed one personal item that fits under the seat in front of them. In addition, such passengers will be unable to claim airline miles and will be randomly assigned seating on the day of the flight. Two. Students and teachers, you might be asking yourself, is she a suitable candidate? She's only been at our school for two years and she's running for student council president. Indeed, I am fairly new to this school. I wasn't here for my freshman year. At first glance, this may seem a disadvantage. But electing someone who attended a different school may actually work to your advantage. I have ideas I can bring in from my former school, which may be like a breath of fresh air. If you choose me as your representative, I promise I'll always consider your opinions before decisions concerning students are made. I strongly believe we should have a say in anything that affects us. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. Students and teachers, you might be asking yourself, is she a suitable candidate? She's only been at our school for two years and she's running for student council president. Indeed, I am fairly new to this school. I wasn't here for my freshman year. At first glance, this may seem a disadvantage. But electing someone who attended a different school may actually work to your advantage. I have ideas I can bring in from my former school which may be like a breath of fresh air. If you choose me as your representative, I promise I'll always consider your opinions before decisions concerning students are made. I strongly believe we should have a say in anything that affects us. Three. Welcome to the Hoover Dam, an engineering marvel producing billions of kilowatt-hours of hydroelectric power, preventing devastating floods in the region, and providing employment for local inhabitants. First, I'll take you on a tour of the dam. I've been asked to emphasize some practical aspects of hydrological engineering, so I'll show you around the pumps, turbines, and power generators. Then we'll proceed to the observation deck, where our chief engineer will briefly explain how the plant functions. I hope the trip will give you valuable insights into the workings of the dam. You might be interested to know that there are some vacancies here each year. 
Those of you considering this kind of career might want to contact our Human Resources Department in your final year. And a word of warning before we start. Part of our route overlaps with guided tours for the general public, so some places might be crowded. Please pay attention and keep up with our group at all times. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. Welcome to the Hoover Dam, an engineering marvel producing billions of kilowatt hours of hydroelectric power, preventing devastating floods in the region and providing employment for local inhabitants. First, I'll take you on a tour of the dam. I've been asked to emphasize some practical aspects of hydrological engineering, so I'll show you around the pumps, turbines, and power generators. Then we'll proceed to the observation deck, where our chief engineer will briefly explain how the plant functions. I hope the trip will give you valuable insights into the workings of the dam. You might be interested to know that there are some vacancies here each year. Those of you considering this kind of career might want to contact our Human Resources Department in your final year. And a word of warning before we start. Part of our route overlaps with guided tours for the general public, so some places might be crowded. Please pay attention and keep up with our group at all times. Zadanie drugie. Przeczytaj polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania. Speaker 1. I was reluctant to pay the removal company $80, so my brother and I decided to transport my washing machine ourselves. We had turned off two taps, but there was another tap that we had no idea about. When we disconnected the washing machine, high-pressure water started coming out of the tap we had missed. We tried to stop it, but failed. The only way to deal with it was to turn off the water in the entire apartment building which, as it was Saturday morning, really annoyed my neighbours. The irony is that I wanted to save $80, and in the end I paid much more in repairs. Speaker 2 I was moving from Sydney to Melbourne, so I used a long-distance removal company to transport my things. I supervised the pickup in Sydney and it went perfectly. But on the day the truck was to arrive in Melbourne, the company sent me a text. I expected it would confirm the time of delivery, but instead I read that the driver had had an accident on the highway. He was okay, but the delivery was going to be delayed. Two days later they phoned to inform me that my belongings would be delivered to a Melbourne warehouse for me to identify. The word identify made me feel a bit apprehensive. And indeed, all that survived from a fully furnished apartment were my golf clubs, a rug and my snowboard. Speaker 3 A few years ago, because of annoying neighbours who made our lives a misery, we had to sell an amazing terraced house which we had renovated from scratch. We then bought what we thought was a nice property in a lovely neighbourhood. But after we moved in, I noticed that many of the roof tiles were cracked, so the roof leaked. As a result, the entire house was damp. When we learned that the estimated cost of repairs was £30,000, we wanted to back out, but it was impossible. We should have had the property surveyed properly, but we had been so desperate that we didn't bother.
Speaker 4 When I moved to Florida from Maryland, I hired a long-distance removal company. When the delivery date came, they called to tell me everything was on schedule. I felt relieved, but as they didn't show up at the appointed time, I phoned them. I learned that the driver had resigned and had just left the truck with my belongings in Jacksonville. They had to fly another driver in from Chicago. When the delivery arrived, I discovered some boxes were missing, and one of those delivered to me contained things that weren't mine. I contacted the company again to make a complaint. They finally tracked down my other boxes and delivered them a few days later. However, I never found out how the loads had got mixed up. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. Speaker 1 I was reluctant to pay the removal company $80, so my brother and I decided to transport my washing machine ourselves. We had turned off two taps, but there was another tap that we had no idea about. When we disconnected the washing machine, high-pressure water started coming out of the tap we had missed. We tried to stop it, but failed. The only way to deal with it was to turn off the water in the entire apartment building, which, as it was Saturday morning, really annoyed my neighbours. The irony is that I wanted to save $80, and in the end I paid much more in repairs. Speaker 2 I was moving from Sydney to Melbourne so I used a long-distance removal company to transport my things. I supervised the pickup in Sydney and it went perfectly. But on the day the truck was to arrive in Melbourne, the company sent me a text. I expected it would confirm the time of delivery, but instead I read that the driver had had an accident on the highway. He was okay, but the delivery was going to be delayed. Two days later they phoned to inform me that my belongings would be delivered to a Melbourne warehouse for me to identify. The word identify made me feel a bit apprehensive, and indeed all that survived from a fully furnished apartment were my golf clubs, a rug and my snowboard. Speaker 3 A few years ago, because of annoying neighbours who made our lives a misery, we had to sell an amazing terraced house which we had renovated from scratch. We then bought what we thought was a nice property in a lovely neighbourhood. But after we moved in, I noticed that many of the roof tiles were cracked, so the roof leaked. As a result, the entire house was damp. When we learned that the estimated cost of repairs was £30,000, we wanted to back out, but it was impossible. We should have had the property surveyed properly, but we had been so desperate that we didn't bother. Speaker 4 When I moved to Florida from Maryland, I hired a long-distance removal company. When the delivery date came, they called to tell me everything was on schedule. I felt relieved, but as they didn't show up at the appointed time, I phoned them. I learned that the driver had resigned and had just left the truck with my belongings in Jacksonville. They had to fly another driver in from Chicago. When the delivery arrived, I discovered some boxes were missing and one of those delivered to me contained things that weren't mine. I contacted the company again to make a complaint. They finally tracked down my other boxes and delivered them a few days later. However, I never found out how the loads had got mixed up. Zadanie trzecie. Przeczytaj polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania.
Our guest today is Clint Buffington, who has found more than 80 messages in bottles washed up on beaches and decided to track down their senders. Clint, how did this unusual pastime begin? At 22, I was holidaying in the Turks and Caicos Islands. On one of the beaches, I saw a bottle with a slip of paper in it. I still remember the shivers that ran through me when I was uncorking it. It turned out that the bottle had been dropped eight months before by a couple on board a ferry. It wasn't a treasure map or a cry for help, but it was a miracle because the bottle had survived its journey across the Atlantic and I had come across it. I felt as though I was in a film. I thought things like that only happened in children's dreams, but it was real. That experience sparked a sort of obsession, and I began spending every spare moment looking for more bottles. And how do you track down the senders? The internet has made it easier than it would have been in the past, and I often get help through my blog, Message in a Bottle Hunter, and my Facebook page. Besides, people who write the messages often leave some clues about themselves, so I'm a bit like a detective checking information or calling places. For example, to find the lady who said she was the owner of a motel in New Hampshire, I contacted the local Chamber of Commerce and the tax department for help. I eventually learned she had died, but I met her daughter, who was astonished when she saw the message her mother had sent decades before. How do people respond when you contact them? Well, I remember one couple who were delighted with their crews, but felt disappointed that the bottle had been found so soon after they had dropped it overboard. There are people who have forgotten about sending a message in a bottle, but most of those who remember are willing to talk to me. One person even invited me to his place for a week. Sometimes it can be funny too. I remember making a phone call to a woman whose contact details I found in a bottle. They were in a message from someone who claimed that he had been taken prisoner by a grumpy old man. It turned out that it was her son who had sent the bottle while he was on a boat trip with his dad. Is there a perfect spot for finding bottles like this? To my mind, the Turks and Caicos are a paradise for message seekers. Hundreds of bottles have washed up on the island since the 1800s, and they come on ocean currents from across the world. It seems the islands work like a magnet drawing the bottles in. A retired geography teacher even founded a museum there. His impressive collection of bottles is available to the public, and plenty of visitors inspired by the exhibits head for the beaches hoping to find more messages. And one more question. How meaningful is bottle hunting to you? I'm hooked. I love the thrill. Even if you are knowledgeable about oceanography, you never know where bottles will wash up, so every find is a treasure. On a deeper level, I guess it is about finding connections. I have picked up bottles from senders from the entire world. I love it when someone tosses a bottle into the sea, in the hope that a person they have never met, in a place they may never have visited, might one day find it. That's fascinating. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. Our guest today is Clint Buffington, who has found more than 80 messages in bottles washed up on beaches and decided to track down their senders. Clint, how did this unusual pastime begin? At 22, I was holidaying in the Turks and Caicos Islands. On one of the beaches, I saw a bottle with a slip of paper in it. I still remember the shivers that ran through me when I was uncorking it. It turned out that the bottle had been dropped eight months before by a couple on board a ferry. It wasn't a treasure map or a cry for help, but it was a miracle because the bottle had survived its journey across the Atlantic and I had come across it. 
I felt as though I was in a film. I thought things like that only happened in children's dreams, but it was real. That experience sparked a sort of obsession, and I began spending every spare moment looking for more bottles. And how do you track down the senders? The internet has made it easier than it would have been in the past, and I often get help through my blog, Message in a Bottle Hunter, and my Facebook page. Besides, people who write the messages often leave some clues about themselves, so I'm a bit like a detective checking information or calling places. For example, to find the lady who said she was the owner of a motel in New Hampshire, I contacted the local Chamber of Commerce and the tax department for help. I eventually learned she had died, but I met her daughter, who was astonished when she saw the message her mother had sent decades before. How do people respond when you contact them? Well, I remember one couple who were delighted with their cruise, but felt disappointed that the bottle had been found so soon after they had dropped it overboard. There are people who have forgotten about sending a message in a bottle, but most of those who remember are willing to talk to me. One person even invited me to his place for a week. Sometimes it can be funny too. I remember making a phone call to a woman whose contact details I found in a bottle. They were in a message from someone who claimed that he had been taken prisoner by a grumpy old man. It turned out that it was her son who had sent the bottle while he was on a boat trip with his dad. Is there a perfect spot for finding bottles like this? To my mind, the Turks and Caicos are a paradise for message seekers. Hundreds of bottles have washed up on the island since the 1800s, and they come on ocean currents from across the world. It seems the islands work like a magnet drawing the bottles in. A retired geography teacher even founded a museum there. His impressive collection of bottles is available to the public, and plenty of visitors inspired by the exhibits head for the beaches hoping to find more messages. And one more question. How meaningful is bottle hunting to you? I'm hooked. I love the thrill. Even if you are knowledgeable about oceanography, you never know where bottles will wash up, so every find is a treasure. On a deeper level, I guess it is about finding connections. I have picked up bottles from senders from the entire world. I love it when someone tosses a bottle into the sea in the hope that a person they have never met, in a place they may never have visited, might one day find it. That's fascinating. Czas przeznaczony na tę część egzaminu minął.